Starting with number 10 now we have David Reamer. When this Canadian man was born in 1965 he was sent to be circumcised but the doctors experimented with an unconventional technique and ended up removing David's entire penis. Now doctors told his parents the best solution would be to give him a sex change operation right there and then, raise him as a girl and never let him know the truth. This ended up tearing his parents apart and his dad told David the truth when he was 14. David then chose to get a reverse sex operation. It was a success. However, David struggled a lot with the events of his past and ended up committing suicide at just 38 years old. In our number 9 spot today we have bees. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. A lot of us know bees is pretty harmless and kind of cute little pollinators, unless of course you're allergic or terrified, but truthfully bees Bees normally do a lot more good than harm. That was of course until an experiment in the 70s went awry and caused a new crossbred bee. This experiment was to take a regular honeybee and breed it with a bee that was found in Africa that produces a lot more honey and of course the goal was to produce a manageable bee that would also be able to provide more honey than a regular honeybee would. Well, the bees that came out were a lot less manageable and they didn't even make more honey. After this experiment ended however, the bees got out into the environment and the 80s saw the beginning of the trouble. These bees are not only aggressive towards other kinds of bees, which creates a huge problem, but they're also very aggressive towards humans. And when these bees sting, their stinger stays with them so they can sting multiple times. Victims of these swarms receive 10 times as many stings as regular swarms, they react to disturbances 10 times faster, and they will also chase the disturbance a quarter of a mile. These bees have actually caused at least 1,000 deaths, so it's safe to say that this is one experiment gone horribly wrong. Moving on at number eight we have the pig human hybrid. Again, you heard me correctly. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in California have created a human pig hybrid. So in 2017, an embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. Then it was taken out and analyzed and the embryo survived and contained some human cells. So their hope is to grow human organs inside of pigs instead of waiting for a donor. Similar to the tests that are being done on the monkeys as I previously mentioned. No animals are safe at this point. In our number seven spot today, we have the wolfin. I wish I never had to say the word wolfin, but unfortunately they do exist. These guys are created when a female common bottlenose dolphin is bred with a male false killer whale. They're extremely rare and have been found in the wild, but unfortunately most of the ones that have existed were bred in captivity. The first recorded wolfin was born at the Tokyo Sea World in 1981, and he very sadly died just 200 days later. Probably a prime example of why they really maybe shouldn't even exist in the first place. The first that was born in the United States that actually miraculously survived was at a sea life park in Hawaii in May of 1985. She ended up having three babies. The first passed away after a few days. The second passed away at the age of nine, but thankfully the third one is still living. In March of last year, both her and her daughter are still alive, but they still remain in captivity. Coming in at number six, we have Ilya Ivanich Ivanov. What a name. But this is the name of the dude that originally tried to create a human chimp hybrid. Ilya was a Russian biologist who did a number of disturbing experiments in the 1920s. He started with crossbreeding animals. So he managed to produce a zebra donkey hybrid, a Z-donk, and a bison cow cross, which is a Zubron, and also crossed rats, mice, guinea pigs, and rabbits together with each other. But he decided to take it further with the human and monkey crossing. In fact, he successfully managed to inseminate three female chimpanzees with human sperm. His experiments were so famous that five women actually offered to carry half-ape babies inside of them in the name of science, which thankfully didn't go through. Or if it did, he did it in private with no one else knowing. In our number five spot today, we have farm cattle. In the 1990s, farmers in India were told that if they crossbred their cattle, they'd be able to breed cattle that could produce more milk, which would of course mean more money for them and their families. This should be amazing and great, right? Well, considering why we're all here today, I think we all know the answer to that question. Different breeds of bulls were brought in and farmers were expecting great things, but they ended up being stuck with cattle that did produce more milk, but also needed way more higher quality food or else they'd stop producing more milk and they were less resistant to the local diseases, so they required more veterinary visits. So it's this kind of situation like, yes, they are producing more milk, which will get us some more money, but they also 
cost us more, and truthfully, most of the times the increased milk production did not outweigh the growing costs. In our fourth spot, we have Hiromitsu Nakuchi. Hiromitsu is a stem cell biologist from Tokyo. Just recently, his experiments have been approved by the government. And let me tell you what he's planning on doing. Basically, he hopes to grow human cells in mice and rats, and then transplant those embryos into surrogate animals. So again, another experiment having to do with growing human cells in animals. So his experiment started by injecting some cells into rat and mice embryos. But those rodents have been genetically manipulated so they can't make a pancreas for themselves. But his hope is that the rodents' bodies will use the human cells to then make a pancreas for themselves. Here's the thing. While conducting the experiments, if they find that the rats are starting to develop a human-type brain, then they have to stop the experiments on them. It's part of the agreement that he has with the government. They don't want a humanized animal coming into existence. In our number three spot today, we have the beefalo. Okay, so beefalo sounds kind of cute and silly, and it also looks pretty normal, so what could be wrong with this one? Well, let's start at the beginning. So, a guy named Charles Buffalo Jones started breeding them in 1906 because the bison population in Arizona at the time was so exceptionally low. So, bison were bred with domestic cattle in order to produce a hardy commercial animal. He ended up just giving up on this and released the animals who were then managed by the state, and the number numbers remain relatively low because of the limited hunting licenses. Well, when the beefalo found their way into a national park where hunting is banned and there aren't any natural predators, the population began to grow by 50% a year. That's wild! So none of this is necessarily bad, but it's the animal's environmental impact that is really the trouble. First off, they're very thirsty animals and can consume 10 gallons each per trip to a watering hole. So they can obviously clear up a water source pretty quickly. Not to mention the fact that they do their business in the water and how their heavy weight compacts the soil. But basically they have thrown the ecosystem off balance and have pushed out other animals and the insects and plant life around have also been affected. In our second spot we have the breeding gone wrong. If you're a dog lover like Olivia and I then this story is going to make you upset. In 2010 a woman named Julie Leroy was working as an animal control officer when an owner of a pit bull puppy said she didn't want to keep her. When Julie saw the dog she was in complete disbelief. The dog had a squished body, huge jaw, a bad underbite, and was oddly shaped. That's because the dog suffered from short spine syndrome. That's because they got the dog from a backyard breeder who was carelessly breeding a bunch of his dogs together. Thankfully, Julie took the dog in and gave her a loving home. But it's sad to see dogs born like this just from reckless people who only have money on their mind. In our number one spot today, we have lions. In the 1980s, the Chapier Zoo in India started an experimental program where they would breed together a domestic lion, which is a bit smaller and has a less shaggy mane, with an African lion in the hopes that they could be introduced to the wild and help with the dwindling population of wild lions in India. The zoo found two African lions that were being used in a circus and brought them in to breed with their two Asiatic lions. When the cubs were born, it was clear that this was already a mistake as the cubs had severely weak back legs. They were having extreme trouble walking and as they got older, their immune systems started to fail. By 2000, when they had already bred more than 70 of these hybrid lions, they finally decided to stop the program and all of the males were given vasectomies in order to stop any reproduction. There are laws that prohibit them from killing animals, so they were simply just waiting for them to die naturally. When there's a dwindling population of lions, it's insane to me that they wasted 20 years trying to do this when they could have just simply bred the lions that they had. Kicking off the list at number 10, the aviator suit. When it comes to new ideas and new inventions, it almost seems messy at first all the time. It's always a horrible start. And today's list is quite messy. A lot of horrible experiments done with groups of unaware subjects. To kick this grim one off, we'll look back to the early 1900s. We'll start with Franz Reichelt, a known inventor of the time. He invented his own version of a wearable aviator suit. It was a parachute. It was made of 320 square feet of fabric. It wasn't light at all. And in 1912, Franz wanted to test this new invention out in public, but instead of using a dummy and throwing that off the Eiffel Tower, Franz wanted to be brave and he strapped himself in. And the rest is history. Dark, 
horrible fast history. At number 9 now we have the chimp baby. In the 1930s a scientist called Winthrop Kellogg thought a chimp could grow up to be like a human if it lived alongside a human baby, his own son. For 9 months he conducted experiments and his son Donald was inseparable from the chimp called Gua. They ate together and they played together. They noticed that Gua was picking up more and more human tendencies from Donald than ever before, but the experiment came to an abrupt halt when Donald, the human baby, began to regress and become more like a chimp. Apparently he would just sit there howling and wailing and would struggle to pick up even basic language like a normal human baby. The experiment was stopped immediately. Alright at number 8 now we have the monster study. This 1939 experiment was conducted on 22 orphans to see how children responded to positivity and negativity when it comes to speech therapy. Half the children were praised for their efforts while the other half were teased and belittled for their speech imperfections. Many of the children who received this negative feedback went on to suffer serious psychological damage for the rest of their lives. It was so bad that some of them could barely even speak again. The monster study got its name from its shocking experimentation on orphan children just to prove a hypothesis. Alright guys coming in at number 7 now we have Dusko. This one was just messed up if I'm honest. In 1962 when the CIA was absolutely obsessed with finding out the effects of LSD, they experimented on an elephant with the help of the University of Oklahoma. The elephant, called Tusco, weighed 3.5 tons and was given enough LSD to make 3,000 humans hallucinate. The CIA were trying to see if they could make the elephant enter must, which is a naturally occurring state where elephants become violent and uncontrollable. The experiment was a total disaster. Trusco almost immediately collapsed and had a seizure for almost 2 hours before finally dying. At number 6 now we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. This psychology experiment conducted by Stanford University involved splitting 24 random students into 2 groups. One group were the prison guards and the others were their prisoners. This was set up for them to study how power and authority works within human groups, but it got really really messed up. It was supposed to last 2 weeks but had to be stopped after just 6 days because the guards began to abuse their power. They would emotionally and physically abuse the prisoners. After just the first day alone the guards were already attacking them with fire extinguishers. Yeah. Some of them suffered serious mental and physical injuries for life. Moving on to number 5 now we have the yellow fever experiment. Dr Firth was a scientist who was trying to prove that yellow fever was not contagious and was actually due to the difference between summer and winter. Now in an effort to prove this he tried to infect himself with yellow fever by drinking the vomit of victims. He also injected it into his body and even poured it onto his eyes. Well it turns out he was right about the whole seasonal thing but for the wrong reason. It's mosquitoes that are the ones who spread yellow fever and they hibernate in the winter. So all the vomit drinking and pouring in the eyes was for nothing. At the number 4 spot now we have testicle radiation. In 1963 researchers offered prisoners in the Washington and Oregon area $25 to participate in reproductive radiation tests. Now they were told they wanted to see how a normal dose of x-ray level radiation would affect a man's testicles. Instead they hit them with about 6 times that amount of radiation. The prisoners as you might expect developed testicular cancer, they became sterile and had many other health problems. The class action lawsuit only gave gave $2000 to each of the victims. We're at the number 3 spot now and we have TGN1412. This was the name of an experimental drug used to treat leukemia. As with most drugs for humans it was first tested on animals to see if it was non-fatal. It wasn't. In fact everything was fine with the animals. They moved on to testing the drug on humans and just to be safe they gave them a dose 500 times lower than the level found safe in animals. 6 of the test subjects were hospitalized with massive organ failure. The trial was stopped and researchers started to work on why this drug was fine in the animals but almost killed 6 humans that it was given to. Moving on to number 2 now we have the Guatemala syphilis experiment. This experiment involved US backed Guatemalan doctors infecting soldiers, prisoners, and prostitutes in Guatemala with syphilis in order to study it. They wanted to see what the effectiveness of penicillin was on syphilis, except they only used penicillin on about half of the 1,308 people involved in the study. At least 83 people died, and 63 years later, President Barack Obama apologized on behalf of the US to the Guatemalan president. And finally, at number one now, we have MK Ultra. This CIA experiment was conducted in the 50s and the 60s in an effort to see an 
LSD and other drugs could mind control people. They tested the drug on countless unwitting citizens, some of them weren't even American. Many of them suffered life altering mental conditions and became very unstable. Those that tried to speak out about what happened met mysterious deaths such as suspicious suicides. Not surprisingly, most of the documents involved with these shocking experiments were later destroyed. Starting off this countdown, we have the human monkey hybrid. Guys, I wish this was fake, but it's not. So scientists are currently trying to make human monkey hybrids. They have high hopes that these experiments will succeed because monkeys and humans are similar genetically. Spanish biologist Juan Carlos Belmonte is working with monkey researchers in China to perform these experiments. So basically they are mixing human cells into monkey embryos. Their objective is to grow a monkey whose organs are completely made out of human cells. They then would use these animals and their organs for people that need the organs. Of course, this is controversial in a number of ways, as you can imagine. Number nine, the Hoffling Hospital Experiment. This experiment happened all the way back in 1966, so a bit more recent, at a time where the rules of psychological experiments, well, didn't really exist, really. I was gonna say they were kind of loose, but no, they were not really a thing at all. Because of this, the nurses that were all part of this experiment had no idea that they were participants, which nowadays is totally illegal, very illegal. The night nurse would receive a phone call during the shift, and on the other end would be Dr. Smith, who's actually the researcher in the scenario. He would ask the nurses to check the medical cabinet to see if they had a called astrotin, which was actually a that was made up for this experiment, and it was actually just a placebo, so don't worry too much. The astrogen would clearly state the maximum dosage of 10 milligrams, but Dr. Smith would ask the nurses to administer 20 milligrams. They were told that the doctor was in a hurry and he would sign the papers later and all that jazz. This just had to get done that night. This had to be delivered to the patient ASAP. If the nurse decided to give the patient the drug, they would be breaking three rules. They're not allowed to accept instructions over the phone. The dose was double the maximum limit stated on the box and the medicine itself was unauthorized. Big two. And it was not in the word stock list so it shouldn't be used in the hospital in the first place. Big three red flags right there. Out of the 22 unknowing nurse participants, 21 of them went to administer this Yeah, big oof on that one, yikes. To be fair, that's the entire point of this test. This is nothing towards the nurses, I'm not ripping on them at all. I mean, this was 1966, we didn't know quite a bit back in the day, you know what I mean? This really showed the pressure nurses are put under randomly in the middle of the night, if anything. Number eight, UCLA schizophrenia experiment. Starting in 1983, UCLA researchers Michael Gitlin and Keith Neutraline went to great and pretty unethical lengths just to see how people who are suffering from schizophrenia relapse, yeah. Basically, they're trying to figure out if there is a way to predict the relapse or you know a psychosis episode of some sorts. Now sounds like a good idea on paper I guess but the way you go about things historically come on we could have done a lot better. Unfortunately this experiment involved recruiting hundreds of participants who were all being treated for schizophrenia at the time and then just taking them off their meds completely. Yeah as I said that you at home probably went ooh. yeah that's exactly right what a horrible idea. Like we're going the opposite way here. We're not supposed to do this, right? There's no suitable plan and order for when they could return to their medication. And they also didn't do a good job making sure these patients were actually safe during these experiments. They're like, yeah, let's just take people off their meds. See what happens. It's horrible. It's one of the worst. Unfortunately, the results were as bad as you thought and proved to be fatal, but one of the participants, Antonio Le Madrid, ended up taking his own life. Again, not sure what we expected here in this sense. An article from 1994 also said the doctors failed to get proper consent from the patients as well. Just a cherry on top of this horrible experiment. Just when you thought it couldn't get worse. There you go. Number seven, psychic driving. British psychiatrist Donald Ewan Cameron is to blame for this one. Remember that name. Don't listen to anything he says. He created the psychic driving concept that the CIA found interesting to say the least. Basically, psychic driving was a procedure that subjects patients to a continuous, repeated audio loop of something that's intended to change their behavior. Just the same line or the same whatever over and over thousands of times. And through the course of their treatment, they would also be paralyzed while being exposed to the loop message. Yeah, the worst thing ever, right? So the CIA heard about this and started sending money to fund Cameron's experiments, but he actually didn't know it was coming from the CIA because they used a 
fake name, classic CIA. Cameron would subject patients to paralytics and electroconvulsive therapy, stronger than usual as well, just to make things worse, just at a horrible limit. The experiments were mostly conducted on patients who entered the institute for more common problems like anxiety disorders or postpartum depression, and ended up leaving with permanent effects from his actions. These included things like amnesia, being unable to speak, some people forgot their parents' names and thought that the interrogators were actually their real parents. Just horrible things, their minds were just so confused. Brutal, brutal stuff. Number six, go pills. Here in Toronto, we have go trains, go buses, but not go pills, not yet. Hopefully not ever, actually. Yeah, move over five hour energy, we got some competition on the horizon. Staying awake is challenging, even when you're doing something you absolutely enjoy, like watching a movie. You'll still fall asleep. It just happens, we're human. My dad fell asleep in a theater once in the moving chairs. I couldn't believe it. Guy's 3D glasses were falling off of his face. I was in shock. But he works a lot. He works crazy hours, he's older. That's where go pills were supposed to come in handy. Workers who have these long shifts and work late hours to pay the bills. This pill was supposed to keep you up for 40 hours straight. So, a bit much, I'd say. The US Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, which is much less air coming out of my mouth, is currently funding this pill. But what if it's mistreated? I can't even begin to imagine the negative effects something like this could have on people. We could barely handle Tide Pods as a community. You know what I mean? It's kind of a bad idea, I vote. Number five, the Milgram Experiment. When learning about our past in further detail, like the Trinity Test, for example, and how that led to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it's important to understand why these things happened and why these people did this, or more so how people are influenced into doing these horrible things historically, especially in large numbers. So the Milgram Experiment was put in place to get an idea. How far will people go when it comes to obeying instructions, specifically if it involves a third party being hurt? Well, Stanley Milgram, Yale psychologist, created this test. There's three important roles for this one. You need the teacher, the experimenter, and the learner. The learner is disguised as the main test subject, but really, they're actually in on the whole thing. The real subject is over here. The teacher, the one administering pain to the test subjects. So they're told by this higher figure, whoever, to keep upping the pain every time they get a question wrong. They're like the rule maker. So the real test here is to see how far humans will go when hurting others under direct authority. It's important to note that the subject also isn't actually getting shocked at all. Again, they're in on it. They play it up. They play it up more and more just to see what's going on. These tests were underway in 1961 in a basement at Yale University. In college, I did improv. That's wild. That's a wild after school curricular activity. Number four, Unit 731. The Imperial Japanese Army's Unit 731 conducted some pretty horrible experiments during World War II that certainly are gonna shock anyone who learns about them. This is wild. This definitely belongs on this list. The experiments were meant to be done as a way to prepare for biological warfare, but the process was horrible and extremely inhumane, as are most of these things. Different medical schools and universities all provided doctors and other research staff to help conduct these experiments. Big group effort, nice, way to go guys. They used both prisoners and civilians as test subjects. There were a bunch of different experiments that were conducted during this time, some of which involved injecting them with pathogens like cholera or anthrax or operations with just no anesthesia, just weapon testing, all painful stuff, really the worst of the worst. Number three, MK Ultra. We have to include a mind control project. Do you believe in mind control? Some claim they're born Born with it, like an X-Men, so if that's you, you know where to meet. MK Ultra, where do I start? Okay, it was originally a secret CIA project that lasted from 1953 to 1973, where they ran hundreds, hundreds of experiments to US citizens. They gave them hallucinogens in attempt to crack mind control, or sorry, as they called it, information gathering. Yeah, it's like what Apple says. Oh, we're just gathering information. Yeah, okay. In the 50s and 60s around the Cold War, the United States believed that the Soviets, Chinese, and or North Korean agents were all using mind control in the war. That was their best explanation towards these brainwashed prisoners of war in Korea at the time. Yeah, it's gotta be brainwashing. Nothing else, right? Horrible tests were being conducted in universities, hospitals, and again, in prisons. The happenings of these projects weren't fully known to the public until years after it ended. It was a huge, horrible secret. The agency destroyed most MK documents back in 1973 when it officially ended, so we think we know, when in reality we probably know little to nothing what actually occurred. Number two, the Stanford Prison Experiment. Perhaps the most famous psychological experiment gone wrong. The Stanford Prison Experiment, let's talk about it. It started August 14th, 1971. It was led by university psychology professor Philip Zimbardo. Again, another university study. My gosh. I mean, to be fair, Hogwarts was also messed up, but Hogwarts wasn't real now, was it? The Stanford Prison Experiment was very 
very real. The experiment took volunteers and divided them into two groups, one group of prisoners and one group of guards. And they placed all these volunteers into a fake prison that was created for the experiment, okay? The experiment aimed to see if and how quickly humans would turn evil under the right conditions, of course, with the right amount of power. Yeah, pretty twisted, right? It's basically a group version of the Milgram experiment. It was a test to try and answer the question of if humans are inherently good or inherently evil. And after just six days, we found out. Yeah, six days later, the experiment needed to be concluded because the guards began absolutely tormenting the prisoners in the worst ways possible. It really showed the kinds of things humans can be capable of, even after just a short amount of time, less than a week, and humans are like, oh, I'll be evil. And finally, coming in number one, facial expressions experiment. Yep, a wild one to close her off. The facial expressions experiment. Okay, back in 1924, a psychologist with, you guessed it, the University of Minnesota, classic university stuff, he wanted to conduct an experiment to study facial expressions, right? Sounds pretty harmless so far, dare I say, sounds a little silly. More specifically, he wanted to see if everyone's expressions of emotions were all the exact same. Does happiness look the same in everybody? Does sadness? What about fear or shock, disgust, anger? What about those? So he recruited some volunteers from campus and then painted the lines of their facial muscles black. And then he exposed each participant to different stimuli in order to photograph their reactions. He wanted to compare all these results side by side. The stimuli at hand was intense. This guy wanted big reactions. He included showing them adult films. He exposed them to ammonia. He made them touch reptiles. And of course, horrible things that I can't talk about here on the tube of you. You know what I mean? Horrible, horrible stuff. All in the name of facial expressions. What an awful experiment, what a dark one. Mm -hmm. 